Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we do a basic concrete walkway. Now this video is going to be geared more towards beginners or DIYers who might be thinking about doing their own walkway and, and trying to figure out how to do it on their own. So if you're really experienced, then this video is probably not going to be for you. So the first thing I do is I get my boards laid out. Now these people hired me just to come in here and do the concrete walkway. Uh, it was actually the excavator, the guys that did the gravel. And what they did was they, they prepped the gravel and then they laid out a white line there on the ground so to give me something to go by. And then they told me the dimensions. So the dimensions are 5 feet wide by about 30 feet long. And so that's what I'll be measuring my forms from when I measure off the building. So right now, I'm just getting my forms in place, cutting them to length. As you can see, i got to cut, cut them in between those two columns. And then I'm getting them pinned where I need to pin them and screwed together. So that's the first thing I do, is get the forms in place, get them put up, get them measured, and get some pins in the ground to hold them in place. Now, in case you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. And this is my YouTube channel. And my channel is geared more for helping you guys learn how to do concrete, whether it's forming, pouring, finishing. That's what this channel is about. So if you like that kind of stuff, you can go down there and hit subscribe. I come out with a couple videos a week. And hit the notification button, and you'll be notified whenever I put out a new video. So I got my forms in place. I got some pins in to hold them. And now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm shooting my grades. So the... The finish grade is that, this is the concrete floor there with the building. We're going to match that with the forms that are up against the building. And then we're going to slope them an inch away from the building. So I'm using my, my top con laser. I'll have a link for that down in the description if you guys are thinking about getting a, a self-leveling laser. I, I highly recommend that one. And I got my grade stick with the receiver on it. So I just set the receiver to the finished floor height and set my, my forms um, up against the building with that and then I I lift the receiver on the grade stick an inch and that drops the grade an inch and that's what I'm using for that form right there right now <clears throat> so I'll check my form I'll get it to grade like that and then I'll screw it to the pin and that holds it right to grade now over here on this corner the dirt was a little bit high so I gotta scrape down under the form get some of that dirt out of there so I can get my form down to grade. I much prefer pouring walkways and sidewalks like this when the forms are right set to grade. It just makes pouring it, screeding it, and finishing it a lot easier. So I gotta scrape about an inch of dirt out of there under the form so I can get it pushed down to where I need to. Now, How many of you guys out there are thinking of doing a sidewalk, something similar to this? Let me know down in the comments. And also let me know down there who who out there is thinking of starting their own concrete business? I mean, how many of you guys are working for somebody and are thinking about going on their own at some point? Let me know down there too because I'm going to be coming out with a course that teaches you how to go, how to start your own business, just like I did. I mean, I started mine when I was, you know, in between 19, 20 years old. I'd been working for somebody for about four or five years up until then, so I I learned, you know, what I needed to learn about pouring concrete and finishing concrete. And then I just jumped out on my own. And I've been on my own for about 35 years. So for, you, for those of you guys who are thinking of that, let me know down in the comments. So I'm getting the boards finished, finished set to grade. Uh, we, like, we like using screws when we, when we pin these boards to the, to the metal pins. That way when we strip them, it's a lot easier to strip than it is a double-headed nail. Now what I'm doing is I'm installing that 2-inch styrofoam. We put styrofoam, I live here in Maine, so we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. And that styrofoam helps protect the, the walkway from heaving in the winter. It just insulates the ground so the frost can't get through the concrete down into the sub-base below it and heave it. So we install styrofoam under a lot of our exterior projects like this. So I'm just cutting it and, and fitting it in place and then we're going to pour the concrete right on top of that styrofoam. Now that styrofoam is pretty expensive. It goes for like almost 40 bucks a sheet up here. Alright, this is the next morning. Uh, it's actually a Saturday morning. 
And we're getting the rebar put in place. We're putting rebar in here for reinforcement, about two feet on center. And I also gonna have, I'm gonna have fiber mesh in the concrete too for reinforcement. So we'll have a double reinforcement. We'll pull this up into the concrete as we pour. What Darren's doing is he's tying it together. He's just using what's called a yo-yo and some wire ties. I'll have those links for those down in the description too, guys. That's just, you know, we don't tie rebar every day. For those of you guys who tie rebar, I know you do it a little bit different. But for us guys that just do it occasionally, a yo-yo and wire ties works plenty fast enough for us. We don't need to do it any faster. Now what I'm doing is I got my my hammer drill and I'm drilling into the into the existing floor so we're going to drill and pin this walkway to the existing floor so it doesn't move just the, we don't ever want it to move higher than that floor or lower so there's we never want a trip edge there so that that generator I'm using is really top notch I mean that thing's great for having it at a work site and then the uh, the Bosch hammer drill too is awesome. I'll have links for all that stuff down there so you can guys check them out. Now Darren's just tapping in the pins and we're gonna be ready to pour concrete here in a minute. So we got it drilled and pinned about every two feet. That thing's never gonna heave right up against the building. It's never gonna settle. And that's exactly what they want. So the concrete truck showing up. We got 4,000. We're just doing a little bit of double checking on the forms, making sure everything's perfect. We're using a 4,000 PSI mix here with fiber mesh. That's a standard mix for us for exterior concrete up here in Maine. It's got air entrainment in it also, and the air entrainment helps protect it against freeze and thaw cycles. So we're just gonna get the concrete poured out and we're gonna screed it. I got a five foot aluminum screed that we'll just screed it level with. Pretty basic stuff for, for pouring. Yeah, I'm putting some ISO strip up again, around those columns just for expansion. But we're going to get the concrete poured out. We're probably pouring about a five or a six inch slump here. And, you know, I'm going to get the edges magged. Then I'll just screed it even with the top of the form and the top of the floor there going into the building. Pretty basic screeding. I mean... I screed off the wet pad up against the building, then I'll screed right off top of the form right there. And then we'll get it all leveled that way. So here it is all leveled, and now we're just putting the bull float to it. And the bull float's used for just pushing down the aggregate in the concrete, bringing up the cream, bringing up the paste. It's going to make it a lot easier to finish. And you can see we got the bull float with the rounded edges. The rounded edges tend to leave a lot less lines in the concrete. And I'm just using my Darby there to, to smoothen out any bull float lines. And then all we do is we now we got to wait and let it set up so it's ready to finish. Now it's in the sun, as you can see, so it's pretty warm here. It's not going to take very long. So what we do is we're cutting some grooves in here. And the grooves are used for a couple things. Number one is for... Hopefully, if this concrete wants to crack, you know, stress crack or shrinkage crack, what do you guys call them? We call, we usually call them shrinkage cracks, but I mean, they're stress cracks too. Let me know down in the comments. Um, so the grooves are for that to help control that. And they're also for aesthetics to make it look, you know, a little nicer. And I'm cutting them on each side of those doorways. So it kind of highlights the doorway entrances. And I'm just cutting them in by hand. So I'm just using a regular you know, a straight edge with a hand groover or a hand joiner. And that's exactly, you know, the way we've done it for years and years and years. Now, there's other ways to do it, too, with, with stand-up walk-behind groovers. And we use those, too. But I just decided to do it the old school way on this one. Now, Darren's getting it magged out behind me. He's using some skids to get onto so he can reach out up there against the building pretty easily. That way he doesn't sink into the concrete. And then he's getting everything all magged out and getting it, getting it ready to broom. And then I'm going to go back. As soon as I got those grooves cut, I'm going back and I'm starting to broom this thing. So there I am just putting a light broom to it. And then that's a really fine broom. It's for concrete. And it'll leave a nice fine broom finish to the surface. And then uh, I'll 
put my finished groove marks in it also as I'm brooming it. So that's that's what I'm going to do right there. I'll broom a little bit, then I'll put the finished groove mark in it, and then I'll run the broom over it. And that's the basic process we use for finishing concrete right there. You can see Darren took the broom for me so he can do that part and so I can come right behind him, put the grooves in it. We don't want to let it sit too long in the sun or we'll have to mag it out again. Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete. We're putting the finish on this sidewalk here at L.L. Beans Distribution Center in Freeport, Maine. Uh, we got a little bit finished already. As you can see we're putting the broom marks to it, putting the grooves and the edges on it. It's a Saturday morning, no one's here, which makes it nice. Pulling that broom across there, giving it a nice broom finish. This is going to be the new employee's entrance. So we decided to leave the finish tool mark on this sidewalk. Um, you don't have to, that's optional. You could just broom over the groove mark and, and leave it that way. And then you could also use different size groovers or joiners and a different size edger if you wanted to. You could have a wider edger. Um, that's totally optional and totally up to you. This, this is, these are just the ones we prefer to use and the ones we're comfortable with using. So as you can see, Darren's coming down right now, leaving the, the finished mark in that. And then as, as he does that, I'm gonna come behind him with the, with the groover and I'll just touch up where he went over the groove with the edger and make sure that thing looks perfect. And that's how we finish these concrete walkways. Hey guys, it's all finished up. Broomed, edged, grooved. 